Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. I remember the days of cameras with actual film in them. In those days, if you wanted to take a picture, you had to be judicious in what you took because the number of pictures you could take was limited and you most likely had a fixed lens so that what you saw was the picture you took. But nowadays, most or many of us have smartphones that take digital pictures so we can snap away to our heart's content, casually throw away the ones we don't like, and keep the best. But these phones have another feature too. They allow us to zoom in for a close-up or to zoom out for a wider look. Most of the time in these Pastor Gary Live segments, we zoom in to look closely at a story, a person, or a scripture text. But this week we are zooming out and looking at the first five books of the Old Testament, called the Pentateuch, in sort of an overview fashion. Today we consider Exodus. The name of the book comes from a Greek word meaning exit or the way out. Early translators gave it that name because of the story of God leading the people out of slavery in Egypt through Moses. What we may not have known before is that the Hebrew title of this book means, These Are the Names. It was called that because the beginning of Exodus recounts the names of some of their ancestors to place the story in the context of who this people is. As Exodus begins, the promises God had made to Abraham and others in Genesis have been called into question. They are living as slaves in Egypt, and the future God has promised them seems far removed from what they are experiencing. God hears the people crying out for help, and so God raises up Moses to lead them to freedom. It's a dramatic and fascinating story with plagues and back and forth, and then finally the Passover which was the key event in God saving God's people. But it doesn't end there. Once the Pharaoh lets the people go, they pass through the Red Sea, and then water comes from a rock, and manna appears each morning, and quail in the evening to sustain them. The people are led by a pillar of smoke and fire and brought to the mountain of God. While Moses is up on the mountain, the people lose faith and build a golden calf to worship instead of the God who had done all this for them. But up on that mountain, Moses receives the Ten Commandments and the rest of the law of God for how the people should live. One of the really interesting things in the story is how often God or Moses gets fed up with the people. Seems like every time you turn around, the people have forsaken God or just been stubborn or stiff-necked, as the Bible often calls them. There are times when Moses calls on God to remember who God has promised to be and not punish the people, and other times when God refreshes and strengthens Moses. And the reason that's interesting is because we know we haven't changed. Deep in our hearts, we know how stiff-necked we are insisting on having things our way and often living a what have you done for me lately faith. When we read the book of Exodus, we not only see God, we also see ourselves. The other thing I really need to highlight is that day of Passover. This became the seminal event in Israel's history. They could point to this event and say there. Right there, God entered history and saved God's people. This event gave them their identity and their future. Just so, Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the meal to remember the Passover, the meal to remember how God had saved and redeemed God's people, when Jesus took some bread and said, This is my body. Then he took a cup and said, This is my blood. In other words, Jesus gave them a new meal to mark how God was entering history again to save and redeem God's people in a whole new way and forever. We continue to remember and renew that salvation meal over and over. In that meal, we find our identity and our future. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.